Start by removing the cover and you can do this by pulling out on the front and back lower portions of the cover. Next, before we get into any taking anything apart, we want to take pressure off the system and you can always do this by putting it into bypass and then cycling it to backwash by pressing regenerate now in the legacy view app or pressing and holding the set change button on the front of the valve. Now that's in the backwash position, uh, pressure has been released so we can safely get into things. You'll now want to unplug the unit and if there's a battery backup installed, you'll want to remove the battery as well. The first two screws you're going to want to remove are these two uh, that hold on the lower back plate. Then you can remove the lower back plate. Next, you want to remove this piston guide screw and washer. Next, you want to remove these two screws that hold the power head onto the valve body assembly. And before we remove the power head from the valve body, we'll need to disconnect the meter assembly. You can either do that by unplugging it from the circuit board or unscrewing it from the valve body here and pulling out the meter. Next, we just have three more screws to remove. And then you can just pull the piston assembly straight up and out. Now, some of the seals and spacers may come out with the piston, that's fine. Depending on how long your system has been in, they may all stay in the valve body and you'll kind of need to dig them out. But you'll have five seals and four spacers, and then there will be a bottom spacer also. So when you're installing a new seal and spacer kit, it's going to come with five of these rubber seals and four of these plastic spacers. It's also going to come with a small tube of food grade silicone lubricant. If you're using a seal kit that didn't come with the lubricant, any food grade silicone will work well. You just wanna make sure that you're not using anything petroleum based. Just put the lubricant all over both sides of the seals and install them one at a time. If you have a softener and you're replacing the brine piston also, you can just pull that out. And there is also an O-ring inside the valve body that you'll want to make sure to remove as well. When installing the new brine piston, just make sure to Put the o-ring in first, make sure that it's seated, and then push the brine piston down into the body. When replacing the seals and spacers, the first thing you're going to put back into the valve body is the end spacer. At the bottom of the valve body, you'll have one of these two types of end spacers. It does not need to be replaced. You can leave it in there, or if you pull it out, just be sure to put it back in. If you have the old style like this, you'll see it has two teeth that are a little bit longer than the others, so you'll need to make sure to put that in the correct direction. If you have the new style like this, it can be dropped in anyway. So when you're putting the seals and spacers back in, you're going to start with a seal, and you're just going to alternate seal, spacer, seal, spacer. Make sure to put them in one at a time, and press down around the outer edge of each seal to make sure that it's seated. The top of each seal uh, should be flush with the ports inside the valve body. So when you're all done, you'll notice about between an eighth and quarter inch of space at the top of the valve body. We can now put the piston in and just push it down by the end plug plate and it'll sit just a little bit above the valve body. That's okay. It's going to compress when we tighten those screws down. You do want to make sure that the piston has this notch at the top facing this direction towards the inlet side of the unit. So we can now go ahead and replace the screws. The three screws that hold the piston end plug plate in place are the ones with the Phillips head. And there will be two in the front and one in the back. The two slightly longer screws with the slot at the top go uh, to hold the power head onto the valve body. So when you tighten these, just alternate. Now we're ready to put the power head back on and the easiest way to do this is to set it down like this and just line the piston up with whatever spot that shaft on the main gear is in. Depending on what cycle you're in when you stopped it, it may be in a different place. Uh, but we were in backwash, and so that's the position it's in currently. You just need to line it up, and then it should slide right back. As long as these two holes are lined up with the screw holes, uh, you'll know that it's in place. So we can then replace the power head screws. Next, replace the piston guide screw and washer that go right here. 
Next, we're going to replace the lower back plate. And then we can replace the meter. And when you put the meter back into the valve body, just make sure that this impeller is facing forward. We can now reconnect the power supply to the system and it's still in the backwash position. So I can just slowly turn on the inlet valve and then turn the outlet valve. And you can either let it go through a cycle from here or cycle it through the steps to return to home.